more plants is definitely good. Real plants, Real not plants, fake plants. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, fake plants, no, it doesn't work. Well, okay, okay. okay, okay. Uh, actually, in feng shui, people believe that yeah. putting fake plants or dead plants around yeah. your house is a very bad luck. Oh. Yeah, so don't do that. Hi, my name is Rizky from Puri for All. Chinese New Year is coming, and one of the beautiful things that we do here in Singapore, regardless what race you are, is to wish everyone a Happy New Year and good fortune ahead. And many of us have the habit of reading about our horoscope and our fortune forecast for the year. And whenever we talk about fortune forecasts, especially during Chinese New Year, the first thing that comes to my mind is Feng Shui. So this year, I decided to invite a good friend who happens to be an expert in Feng Shui to visit our office and give me a little bit more understanding about it. So if you're like me, curious about Feng Shui, but at the same time somewhat skeptical, I think this video can be useful for you. Hi, I'm Fish. I'm a spiritual advisor and the co-founder of the Magic Mama Shop. Feng Shui in Chinese literally means wind and water. Wind is referring to air, the air that we breathe. Without air, we can't survive. Without water, we also can't survive. So Feng Shui is a belief that by adjusting certain things in certain directions and seeing your own elements, how can we better improve your life? How can we better improve the energy around in your environment? In Feng Shui, we believe there are five elements that make up this entire world. Metal, water, wood, fire, and earth. Metal grows water because when you melt metal, they become liquid. Water grows wood naturally, and wood grows fire. When you burn finished fire, the ashes become earth. And earth grows metals because they grow minerals and they grow crystals. Yeah, so that's the full cycle of how they help each other. Of course, when you go back the other way is how they exhaust each other. If you draw a star in the center, you will realize that's the destructive cycle of the five elements where water is against fire. Fire is against metal because fire melts metal. Metal is against wood because metal can chop wood. Wood is against earth because wood absorbs the nutrients from earth. And earth is against water because earth absorbs water. So Fish, I've always been very interested with uh, Feng Shui because uh, uh, my mother-in-law is really into it. Mm -hmm. So before I got married, so of course, he asked some Feng Shui master yep. for some advice. I always find a really interesting link between Feng Shui and storytelling, which is basically what we do here most of the time. Mm. We storytell through video productions. Right? Yep. I really like the fact that when we meet up for the first time, then you saw my bracelet. Yeah. Apparently, I've been wearing my bracelet wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you can explain about this moment. Can. Yeah. Okay, so for the dominant hand, right, we always see it as the releasing <laughs> hand. Because uh, when we are writing, when we are exerting force, it's always releasing from the dominant hand. Yeah, so in crystal wise, we will wear things that we want to release on the hand instead. Okay, for the non-dominant hand is our absorbing hand. So he was wearing the gold on his releasing hand and he's releasing money. Yeah, that's why I have to correct him to wear on the other hand. So what I want to ask Fish in this video is basically to give a bit of a preview. So for anyone like me who are pretty much curious about Feng Shui, uh, I always believe that there is a lot of positivities in uh, Feng Shui. So I thought uh, this can be a good preview for everyone who is watching this video. Mm. What you will actually get when you actually meet a Feng Shui advisor. I want to ask you about my Feng Shui. What is the first thing that you will ask me? The first thing yeah. I would ask is literally mm -hmm. like ask you to check your Batsu elements ah, first. Okay. Yeah, because uh, yes, there are general advisors on things to put, um, the direction where to put mm. the house, for example, where's the window, where is the door, that kind of positioning. Uh -uh. But uh, it's all general. When you see your own elements, then you we can put. When you see your own elements, then we can personalize what is more necessary for you, specifically for you. And so every individual has a different parts to each other. So meaning to say, like the advice that you will give to me may be totally different to the advice yes. to that uh, you will give. It will to be me. very different. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Prior to this video, I've given you the information mm. of my birth date and also my uh, birth time, right? Yeah. And from there, what do you normally do from there? In, in parts, right, the five <laughs> elements, how do we derive is your year is an element, your month is also an element, okay. your day and time is another two elements. Uh -huh. Total, there are four. And within each of it, there's the Tian Gan and Dichi, there's two branches to it. So total, there's eight. And we see that we judge the percentage based on that to see which of the element do you have the most, what's your most dominating element, uh -huh. yeah, and what do you lack off what do you need to stay closer to right in right. a way yeah so for oh. your personality wise um your highest element is actually water okay. which is 37.8 percent 
wow, followed okay. by earth, which is 35.6%. Okay. Okay. Wow. okay. Oh. So water and earth are the stronger traits in you. Uh, water is really very flowy. You know, okay. um, being able to express yourself, being able to talk to people. That's wow. one good thing about water. But uh, one bad thing is, you know, it also means money. Like it comes in quick, it goes quick. Oh. Yeah. Can, be, me, can mean that things are not very stable at times. Can right. mean that yeah. things can be very up and down. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi having high water percentage can also literally mean you have a higher sex drive. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. When you have a good amount of earth, it means you are humble, you are loyal, you mm -hmm. are a good friend to people. Right. But when you have too much earth, it can mean that you tend to be a little bit stubborn at times oh. and you may not. Uh, you may be taken advantage of, maybe too naive at times, without realizing right. it. Yeah. Although nowadays we uh, work from home quite a lot, mm. but I do a lot of uh, webinars, I do a lot of uh, uh, Zoom meetings from this table. Mm, so I think, uh, I know that this is quite messy, so I do believe you have a lot of uh, suggestions for me on this. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, first of all, in Feng Shui, we believe that the more things mm. that you have, the more uh, storage that you stack up is blocking the qi, is blocking the energy flow. Okay, so I will ask you to clear all the boxes to ah. put it somewhere else, or if unnecessary, just throw it, throw the, just throw them away, yeah. right? Uh, then keep it as simple as clear as possible. Then also have more like red things or oh. green things here. You can literally have uh, some red crystals or like pink crystals ah, here ah, also ah, ah. for the decoration, for the love, for the passion, for the drive. So the placement technically it doesn't matter much, but it has to be the I mean, elements. If the uh, shelf is in the correct direction, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, so okay, okay. this one yeah. I haven't checked with compass. Yeah. <laughs> understand, understand. <laughs> okay, so I, I so basically when you mm. go into like someone else's desk, let's say you go to someone else's office, you will actually check the your compass mm. and see the positions of the desk and all. Yes. And correct. you try to orientate it before you even put any elements. Yes, any elements. yes. Uh, the main things we yeah. have to shift first. A lot of misconception is that, that Feng Shui is only for older generations. So I'm wondering like, what does like younger people nowadays think about Feng Shui? So obviously I have uh, pretty young colleagues with me, so I guess it's a good time for me to ask them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I think my question would be, um, when it comes to Feng Shui, right? Um, what's the scientific proof behind it or the scientific logic behind it? Okay, yeah. so in physics, in science, we all learn that energy is indestructible, right? It only can be transformed from one form to another. And uh, Feng Shui is really just the qi, which is the energy, how it flows around, how we can alter the energy to change it from one form to another that's more beneficial to us. And also, a lot of the theories or stuff that people don't believe in, like spiritual stuff, right? People don't believe in because it's not scientifically proven. But all scientifically proven stuff were all theories before it was proven. So all these new theories are just yet to be proven because human can't comprehend that. Yeah. You get my point. Wow, amazing, amazing. So, so basically, it's, yeah. uh, it, it, it's still more based on faith yes. as compared to something that is proven. Like it's like how if you have faith in the, like if you're using scientific theories as an example, for example, it would be um, them having faith in their theories and then getting it proven. Yes, so, yes. And correct. before that function is still in the process of that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. mm, but really, like, we see it like energy force, how right. it's being changed from one form to another. Okay. For now, it's yeah. proven based on every individual that actually achieves whatever you yeah. guys have advised them for. Like, mm. right? Cool. Right, right, right. Honestly, when I've spoken to uh, Fish for the first time, right, it's kind of uh, I was of course skeptical. Last time when my, my mother-in-law introduced me to the Feng Shui Master, mm. I was skeptical too. But when you read the chart, right, it kind of all makes sense. Eh? So right. I don't. I mean, I can be skeptical, but it's kind of true. So I think uh, uh, it's it's good to have an open mind, lah. Mm, right? Yes, yeah. come with an open mind. You know, mm -hmm. let us enlighten you with uh, what we can provide. Because really, personality astrology is really more about your personality. How we can change. Uh, yes, a lot of things are fixed. Your personality is fixed the moment that you are born. But you can always choose to amplify the good of it and try to minimize the bad of it. Yeah, we know what we are born with now. Yeah. So now we work better to achieve with what we have. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. I think Mian, this, one, this one you can be. You can be closer to the camera, Dion. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm recording. Oh, no, how you feel like? 
I, I thought you want to become vlogger. Yeah, but you think yourself is very different. Yeah. From <laughs> me, yeah. So, so Dion, what is your question? Oh, okay. Yeah. So like, just very curious right now. Um, what, what do you think my luck? Like, how do you think my luck will be for this year? Because I'm actually very optimistic, but um, you know, I kind of very curious about how how will it be for this year. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I don't have your birth time and all that to check your path first. Uh, but I know in general you're a snake and you're against the zodiac sign this year. So try to watch out for you know um, verbal conflict. Try to think before you talk. Try to not make impulsive decisions. Don't take big risks as well. Yeah, because uh, in general when you are clashing with the zodiac sign, it's not really gonna be a lucky year. Per se. Yeah, so what you can do is, uh, as the Chinese believe, wear something red every day. It can be red socks, red underwear, red string around your as long list. As long as there's something red. Yeah, as long as there's something red. Dye your hair red. <laughs> every <laughs> day, eh? Every day. As so in that for the, the year. Oh. Oh. Until next year's Chinese New Year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Mm. Okay, okay. So Chinese New Year is coming very soon, so I understand that a lot of people are actually buying plants in this mm. period of time. Yes. I've seen a lot of people buying plants yesterday. And, but I do understand that a lot of these plants actually has meaning. So, mm. meaning to say that we can't actually just simply buy and put it in the house and all and pray for luck, right? So, is there any advice for Okay, them? so mm-hmm. yes, in general, plants are very good for luck uh, yeah. to attract the feng shui, the good energy into our house. You can mm. place right outside beside the door, you can place under the window. Okay, but the thing is, like I said just now, each person is different. If the person need to avoid wood and uh-huh. he has a lot of plants at home, that's not gonna do him well. Yeah, ah. so be it uh, all this general feng shui thing, you can listen to it, but still have your own version, your own report first before you right. decide to do something about it. Yeah, and also oh. each plant has so many uh, different symbolisms. For example, you are gonna buy chrysanthemum for Chinese New Year. Okay, chrysanthemum in Chinese is really for deceased people. Yeah, so there's a lot of different things, but people who may not understand this, they just randomly buy to decorate a house, you see. Uh, For Chinese New Year, it's always lime trees, orange trees, uh, the money plants, and uh, even the one that you bought yesterday. Yeah, all these are okay. Mm. okay. Especially that you need to stay closer to wood, so it's good to have that. Wow, okay. Uh, Then what if like, I mean, you stay in a family, an example, right? Mm. Obviously, your family members has different plants mm. and all, right? Yes. So, what do you advise? Is it like buy specific plants for each person or? No, uh, I would mean? always suggest yeah. split it. Yeah. Split it. Split it. Oh, split it. Split oh, it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Even me and my mom, we have clashing parts, clashing yeah. personality also. Uh, the funny thing is, she need to avoid wood. I need to stay closer to wood. Uh, every ah. she but she loves plants. She keep buying plants home. Every time she buy one, it will just die. It will just die and die and die. Then every time when I water it, I do nothing else but just water it. It just become alive again, alive again, wow. alive again. Maybe. Yeah, so it's quite funny, but uh, really depends uh on each person's uh personality and mm. the parts, right? We have to place different things in different rooms. Yeah, your room is your ah. your direction. My room is my direction. Ah, yeah. Then okay, we, can we split it. Yeah, split it up. We can based on the elements that you need to stay closer to. Mm. Uh, we can take a look around your office and see what you need to arrange, what you need to put at certain directions ah. to improve your luck. Per ah, se. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, since you need to stay closer to wood and fire, right? Uh, right. having more plants is definitely good. Real plants, Real not plants, fake plants. Right. Okay, okay. Yeah, fake <laughs> plants. No, doesn't work. Well, okay. Okay. okay, okay. Uh, actually, in feng shui, people believe that yeah. putting fake plants or dead plants around your house is a very bad luck. Oh. Yeah, so don't do that. This has been a really uh, interesting experience and I definitely learned a lot through mm. this experience. And uh, thank you so much for coming to this. Thank office. you for having me. And of course, Happy New Year mm. and all the best for, I know for both of us, this year may not be the most luckiest year just yet, mm-hmm. but I do believe we can do our best still. Yes. And mm. Happy New Year to you and your Happy team. Happy New Year to you and your team too. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. With that, the Magic Mama Shop and the Creative Out wish you guys a very happy Chinese New Year.